Hello! In this video, I would like to talk about finance for two reasons. First, I think it is a good way to demonstrate some of the concepts we have learned so far. I also think it is important and relevant to everyone's life. All of us at some point will deal with finances and investing in some way. I should mention that I am not a professional investor. While I was getting my MBA, my focus was mostly in finance. I personally have invested in stocks, but never on a large scale or with someone else's money. So I don't consider myself qualified to provide actual financial advice about specific stocks and so on. Rather, the goal here is to learn some useful information to be used broadly in many different situations. Okay, in the last video, we discussed managed funds when people invest large sums of money for other people. Interestingly, these people are on average not able to outperform the market. This may sound surprising to us because we would expect professionals to be able to do this. The reason for this can be explained by the efficient market hypothesis, which roughly states that it is almost impossible to beat the market on a consistent basis. This is because any information that becomes available about that stock or that company will immediately be priced in to the stock value. In other words, the price already reflects all the available information on that stock. Of course, once in a while someone may have good luck and beat the market, but the point here is that it is almost impossible to consistently beat the market. This may seem like a very pessimistic view, but it is actually a good thing. It means that, as an amateur investor, I can buy index funds, which are essentially samples of everything going on in the stock market, and I get the average performance result of the market, meaning I can get the same returns on my investments as many professional investors with no effort. Let's take this concept further by considering stock prices and how they move. Here I would like to briefly introduce a famous model for stock price movements. It is called the geometric Brownian motion, or as I call it, the coin toss model. It's probably the most famous model for stock prices, and it can be related back to our discussion of randomness and coin tosses. Basically, the geometric Brownian motion values the prices of stocks based on very, very small increments of time, say every tenth of a second. With each time increment, the price either goes up or down by a small percentage, similar to getting either a heads or a tails when flipping a coin. Say heads means the stock price goes up and tails means it goes down. And the result over time is a very erratic looking graph. It might be surprising to you that the most famous model for stock prices is mostly based on a simple coin toss. While the model is not completely accurate, for example, it does not explain big jumps in the prices, it is useful for helping us better understand the randomness in prices. In particular, this model implies that stock prices are determined by many independent trials of the coin toss experiment. What does this tell us? Imagine you are looking at the stock prices of a company and you have observed a large number of tails recently, meaning the stock price has gone down, let's say 10% since the beginning of the year. Then you might be tempted to say, we've seen many tails in a row, so it's about time that the price will go back up meaning there will be several heads soon. This is a fallacy we have talked about before. Remember that the coin tosses are independent, and so the same is approximately true when it comes to stock prices. Just because the stock has continually gone down does not mean it is due to rise soon or vice versa. This somehow shows why it is very difficult, nearly impossible, to time the market or to figure out when the stock will go up. Many things are at work when analyzing stocks, the narrative fallacy and the hindsight bias, for example. They can make us think that we can predict the stocks, but in reality, we cannot. 
How can we use this information? Firstly, for the average casual investor in stocks, it is good to keep the coin toss model in mind when investing. Simply think of the stock movements as coin tosses. I am not saying that this model is completely accurate and perfect, but by having this kind of view as an amateur investor, you are reducing your chance of losing a lot of money. A lot of people think they can predict the market and end up losing quite a bit of money. Just because you can't predict the market doesn't mean you can't still benefit from investing in stocks. I'll talk about this a bit more in depth in future videos when for example we discuss how we can benefit from the law of large numbers. But for now, it is important to keep the coin toss model in mind if you plan on investing. Also, keep the narrative fallacy in mind. Don't be tempted to explain the movements of stock prices after the fact. By doing these two simple things, hopefully we would be able to not only avoid losing our money, but perhaps after some time get some financial return from our investing. Thank you for watching.